So you might have some data from another program such as Access or you might have data that's been exported from another database and it's in a text format and you want to bring it into Excel. So what you need to do, I'm in Excel 2010 and this is similar in 2007 and 2013 and you would need to go into the data menu to find the similar commands actually in older versions. So I'm just going to show you how to bring in something from Access very quickly and then how to bring something in using it in a text-based format. From Access is really simple. Make sure you're on the Data tab at the top. Go to From Access and we are just going to choose one where I have actually got an Access database. So this one here has got some DVDs in it and here you'll see all the tables and queries that you can actually pull information in from. So if you've got a query, it might already be filtering the data that you want, which could be really useful, but it could take a bit of time. In fact, if you've got a lot of data, it could take a bit of time. So here's one. This is a list of DVDs in a pretend DVD store that I set up. And I'm just going to click on OK. And you'll see it prompts me. So here you'll see you can have a table, pivot table report, pivot chart, and pivot table report. And it's going to put the data in. It's actually chosen the cell D9 here, which I've got clicked over here. I think actually I'll put it in the top corner there. Clicking on properties, you'll see it's got enable background refresh. You can get it to refresh every so often, such as every 60 minutes, or you can get it to just refresh the data when opening the file. So basically what that's going to do is it's going to check the data and then it's going to uh, update it in your Excel spreadsheet, which is quite handy. In here in the definition, it's just showing me information like the file that it's connected to, the connection string. You don't need to know any of this stuff. This is all kind of techy kind of things, just showing you where it's actually getting the information from. You've already selected it. So I'm just going to click on OK. And I'm going to click on OK again. And you'll see it's now pulled in the data and it's actually applied already here a filter. So I could choose to just have the children's one. So I could just filter like that. So that's bringing it in from Access. What if it's coming from somewhere else? I'm just going to get a new spreadsheet here. So Control N or if you're using a Mac command then would give me a new file. Or I could have just gone into File and chosen New. So I'm going to here on a new one. I'm going to go into data. Now, if you're bringing information in from, or data rather, from another program, it could be that it's not compatible. So in the other program, it may have exported it into a text-based format, comma separated or tab separated, so that basically the columns, it knows which column to put it in based on the comma or by a tab that has been put in there. So if I go to from text, you'll see I've got a sample one here and it's got CSV at the end, which is comma separated values. So it's commas that are doing it. I'm going to click on import and it will we'll go through the process of doing this. So whether it be tabs, which could be TSV or ending in .txt. CSVs can also end TXT as well. Then it's going to take you through this wizard. So if it has got commas or tabs, then it's delimited because it's the comma or the tab that's delimiting it. Fixed width means that your data took up a certain amount of space, even if it didn't use all of it. So if you had something like someone's name and it was only four letters, but it had left space for 20, then you would go through like that. And that's kind of not done so often these days. So start import at row, and it's choosing from row one, which you can see at the top here. So it's got that there. So it could be that the data didn't start in row one and you want to change the number. You can just easily click on these arrows or you could have actually typed it in. The file origin, most of the time it's MS-DOS, even if it's come from a Mac, normally it chooses that. And you'll see, I must admit, I've never had a reason to actually change it. So if it doesn't come through properly, it could be that. You can actually see here a sample of your data, so you'll know if it's working properly or not. So if I changed it to something else, it might just not look right. But as it happens, just randomly choosing one there, it didn't make any difference. So I'm just going to click on Next. And you'll see here the screen sets the delimiters that contain your data. And you'll see it's defaulted to the tab 
Now you can see here there's commas and it's the commas that are going to tell me where the columns are. So I'm going to untick tab and choose comma and you'll immediately see down here in the preview it's actually changed it. So let me just do that again. There's tab, nothing separating anything, choose comma and it's doing it there. Now it could be something else. It could be a semicolon, a space or something else and you might have been told what it was when actually you were sent this data. Usually it's that one or that one comma separated, very, very popular. Text qualifiers, sometimes you might have an address that's very long and it might have commas in there. So if you've got quotes on either side, it will ignore the commas in there so it knows it as one field and you can tell it what it is from one of these. Quotes again, very popular in there. You'll find that most of the default settings are doing it all for you. Click on next. It now wants to know the columns here, what type of data they are. I find I very rarely need to change this. So if I go into date, for example, it now knows it's a date format and you could tell it like in the UK, DMY date month year or month day year for the states. Or you could just actually choose to skip. So if I click on that, it won't import the data. I'm going to go back to general for that. Same for all the others and you could work your way through and if something didn't look quite right, you could change it. If I click on advanced, it's got like a decimal separator. Full stop is a decimal and thousands are commas. So you kind of need to know that because in Europe you might use a comma for a decimal and full stops for the thousand separator. So I'm just going to click on OK for that. I'm now going to click on finish and then I'm just going to click on OK because it's selecting that first cell. I could have chosen a new worksheet. It would have created a new worksheet within this workbook. So A1 because that's where I had it selected. It's going to click on properties. So you'll see if I've gone into the properties, I've got prompt for file name on refresh. So if I do refresh it, there is a button to refresh. It will ask me for the file name. If I click on refresh every 60 minutes, it will update the data. It will look at the text file. If there's any changes, it will refresh it. Or you can have it that it refreshes the data when it opens. OK, so they're kind of important ones to have. I'm just going to turn those off in this instance and click on OK. And OK again, and you can see it's imported the data there. So that's how you can import data from Access or from a text source into Excel.